Since leaving behind the cornfields of Illinois, a special treat has been to behold the beauty of the white fields of cotton here in West Tennessee. When I learned that a new friend actually works at a cotton gin, I immediately asked if a tour might be possible, and the answer was yes. So my good sewing friend Dale joined me and we took a day trip across the Mississippi to Seneth in the foothill of Missouri. Settled back to learn the very interesting start of cotton, a fiber so very important in our hobby of sewing. Forgive me for the vertical framing a few times. You'll be able to tell how excited I was to learn all about what happens in a cotton gin. So let's get started. You're probably in the 1920s, but it's pretty much the same technology that is quite a bit older than that, that like Eli Whitney would have invented. And the cotton goes here and you would crank that around and then these nails on that drum pull the seeds off of it. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. And see, that's much faster than what they were doing before by pulling those seeds off by hand. <laughs> pulling all the seeds off. So show us on a piece of cotton. Okay. Here's, we're talking to a uh, sewing enthusiast here. Yeah. See, they, you've got to take the seeds out of it so that the lint cotton is ready to be spun into thread and then uh -huh. milled into cloth. And you said this is upland cotton. It's a very high quality. It, we, Our farmers pretty much always produce cotton that, ha, that has um, high quality standards and they get paid a little bit of a premium for that. Okay. Yeah. And um, just repeat what you shared with me earlier. Most of this cotton will be shipped to... Most of it, we send it to a warehouse in Manila and then it gets sold to buyers in Memphis and in Texas. Okay. But they deal with mills all over the world and buyers all over the world. A lot of it will end up in uh, Indonesia, Vietnam, Pakistan. Those are the places that are really... Mm -hmm. Uh, spending a lot of thread and making a lot of cloth and clothes to ship back to us to buy from them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, Dale shared with me on the way over, because she's lived here in the South for a long time, that she was told at one point in time that a bale of cotton out in the fields was worth $500. I said, oh, I bet it's worth more than that now. It's worth less than that now. Yes. There was a time probably when it was worth that much, for sure. In fact, um, the price fluctuates so much mm -hmm. that I, we have sold cotton since I've been working at the gin for as much as $500 a bale, but it's only worth about $300 a bale this mm -hmm. year. The price is really depressed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A okay. lot of the commodity prices are down. Though. Reason being, I don't understand all that stuff. Well, the cotton prices are down probably because China controls a lot of the market and they have a great big surplus in their warehouses. Okay. And they're okay. gonna sell off that surplus in a real controlled way and keep the price of cotton low mm. for All right. an, at least another year and a half. Well, thank you so much, Barbie. We'll continue <laughs> this in a minute when we get into the gin. Uh, Patsy grew up over around Crockett Mills, okay. Tennessee. Patsy, closer, come over Closer here. to you no, all. Yeah. That's good. Okay, that's so she good. says she picked cotton. Yeah. So I see you, you just drag that sack along. And this is like gripper fabric on the bottom of your well, children's PJs. Yeah, so that <laughs> so that the sack will last longer because so, it gets okay. drug on the ground. Mm -hmm. That's long. Yeah, that's like that's five, a nine foot so sack. That's a nine foot sack. Mm -hmm. That would that's, get pretty heavy. It does it get is. heavy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. It wasn't unusual to be able to put at least a hundred pounds into that sack. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the experience of. Picking cotton. It's long and tiresome. <laughs> long and tiresome, she says. She won't let me film her. <laughs> and that scale hanging down there, that would be hanging, no, here's the right line. here. Right here it is. That oh. would be, just take it off. Yeah. That would be hanging from the back of the wagon. I mean, it had a, a heavy weight that was called a peak, and you'd put it on the edge of it, mm -hmm. it'd go out there, and that's how they would weigh the uh, sacks of cotton. Mm -hmm. So, how many of those sacks could a person pick in a day? Well, if a person picked 300 yeah. pounds in a day, that's a real big day. That's a big day. That's a real yeah. big day. Mm -hmm. 
I would get 200 sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you're bending down, you're bending over this yeah. whole time. Oh, absolutely. And how much did you get paid for picking 200 pounds? It was like $3 a hundred. Yeah. $3 Three dollars. a pound. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I, I got paid three and a half cents a pound, but I work for my own dad. The truck out there. <laughs> okay. The, the truck that's out there is going to haul <laughs> seed to the cotton <laughs> mill, the to the oil mill in Memphis. Yeah. Okay. And um, we'll, when we go out to the gin, you'll see where that comes from. But okay. they, the, the gin gets paid by selling the seed. We don't charge the farmers for ginning their cotton. They sucked out of the trailer to be ginned. Okay, so this is old technology where this, this would suck this, this up. Yes. Okay, but we don't do that anymore. Now, now stop right here. Okay. Okay. Now, looking back behind you, you can see where that truck would have unloaded the mod. See the truck back there? Uh huh. And he just backs up to this platform here. And then this is a conveyor here that'll push these modules along. Okay. Until they get up there to where that guy is sitting on the platform. Uh-huh. And he pulls the plastic, the yellow plastic, off of that module so that it's really, or so that, or off of that round. It's not a whole module. It's just four Oh, four. I thought that was really thick, but it's not. It's just going around the corners of yes. the module. Yeah. Okay. Very That's nice. what Fred made for his costume last night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that just keeps the cotton dry. Yeah, that keeps the cotton together and dry. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, and then pull up just a little bit more. See what's happening up there behind that guy? Oh, there's some yeah. forks there that are kind of breaking the cotton up. And then there's a big vacuum that's pulling the cotton across and into those big pipes up there. Okay. Into those big pipes. Uh -huh. Okay, so yeah. at this point, are the seeds still in oh, the Oh, absolutely. Yes. Okay. okay. Now pull up a little bit more. And then one there and one there. We call those the stick machines. <laughs> They're just taking out the big stuff. The, yeah. the sticks, the holes, the trash. Okay. okay. That's okay. all that they're doing. How long do they stay in there? Oh, um, not too long, really. It all happens pretty fast. I don't, I don't know about seconds or minutes. Though. John, <coughs> okay, that, that, okay. that that wooden gin in the office did okay. back when Eli Whitney invented it. You know, they're they're taking the, the seeds out of the cotton. Can okay. you see it all the way up there? Yeah, I'm I'm going to bring you something back. I'll be I'll okay. be back. terribly many men in here. I think I've counted maybe three or four. Looks like they're cleaning up all the time. Yeah, yeah, it does. You know what? I think fire hazard is a big thing in a cotton gin. I'll have to ask about that. I see a woman. That's where she got uh -huh. She's blowing with air or water. Yeah, I think so, it's air. Okay. And over here, those yellow wrappers, here they gathered them, and I guess somebody folds them up. There's stacks of them. They'll be recycled. I don't know if it would be reused or not. Okay. Here's the seeds that they've taken out of the cotton. And you can, you can have yeah, those. It. Okay, so you get a better yeah. picture. light on. There's the seeds. Okay, and Dale's getting a phone call. <laughs> okay, now this is the cotton that I picked up from over on this side, you know, before it ever even went through the stick machine. So this is the kind of stuff Can you that the me? stick machine would have taken out. It's too dark yeah. back there. Okay, and then those seeds get taken out here by the gins. 
And then there's the cotton after the seeds have been taken out. Of okay, it. so show me the cotton after the sticks have been taken out. And now well, I, I don't have that. This is when the sticks are still in it. Okay. This. The, this is dirty cotton. That's the sticks and the seed are in that cotton. Now this may be a dumb question, but it's all cotton white. You know, I know the answer to that question because I've heard and seen at the Houston Quilt Festival uh, some firms in Texas that grow cotton and they they do something as it's yeah. growing so that it's organically a different color. Yeah. But I, in general, it's white. Okay. Yeah. We don't grow anything except white cotton around here. I've seen cotton that is white. Okay, yes. so that's dirty. And now here's the... Yes. Okay, this, so is, this is dirtier. And then this is cleaner. So this is well, after this it's gone through the, the cotton. cotton. Yeah, this is the cotton that has been ginned. This okay. is ready to be put into a bale okay. and shipped off. Okay. Uh, that's ready to go to a mill All to right. be spun. And then here in my hand are the seeds, like are going to be on that truck that get shipped off. Now, what do they make out of the seeds? Well, they do a lot of different things. A lot, some some of it is animal feed, cattle feed, or dog food, or something like that. <laughs> some of it is, is uh, sold as oil for cooking. Cotton seed oil. Cotton seed oil, uh, duh. Yeah, and, and some of it is used in the plastics industry, too. In the plastics industry. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've even read that there's cotton in um, face powder. Yes, I think that's um, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, some other things. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'll I think if you looked at labels, you'd be able to find cotton seed oil in, in a lot of things. It might surprise you. It's know. warm, not surprisingly, from from being in the machine. There's still some trash in this, is that? It, it, there's a little bit. In fact, what I picked up is the, is from the overflow machine. I, did, I didn't okay. pull it out of the last. It, it's going to get put back in one oh, more time. Okay. okay. But it's still very close to me. So even Just this like is going to go through one more time? Yeah, but it, it, it won't change much when it goes through. Okay, one and one this time. is upland cotton because these staples this is a staple and as I guess if, if you were doing this all by hand you would take this fluff and spin it into the yards yeah yeah, but, yeah. very cool it's very soft uh, oh they're gonna have um, so the seeds cleaning. are going over here uh -huh. and say again Barb this this the seeds are stored in these seed houses. Okay. Until one of the trucks pulls, pulls underneath, underneath them and drops it in to there. load, and and each of those trucks probably will carry out ten to twelve tons of seeds at a time to the warehouse. I mean to the oil mill. Yeah. Just a minute. Up there. At the this top. is the press. Uh -huh. This okay. is the press. I think you're going. Can, so it's taking this fluff that, and it's going to press it down into a really hard bale that weighs very close to 500 pounds. Okay, a bale that weighs, weighs you know what, 500 maybe, pounds. Maybe that's what I was told, that each bale weighs 500 pounds. That, that has been the, that has been the standard. on the side of the bale and that number identifies our gin, our warehouse, the farmer, and the field that it came from. All so for that, what purpose? So that the right person gets paid for it. Oh, yeah. And she said they also, yeah. in Memphis, they grade the cotton. Uh -huh. At the okay. classing office, they'll put it through a lot of tests to decide about the quality. Most of our cotton gets three or four cents of premium. See, there's the sample she just pulled. Uh -huh. and, and 
you'll see her stick a, a number on the side of it here too. Okay. Amazing. Now how old is this Dalton cotton gin? It was built in 1997. Okay, so pretty new, really. Pretty new, yes. Yeah. And did it replace an older Dalton cotton gin? No. It, it, it's a, it's a, new, it's operation. a new operation. Okay. about that identifies the the gin, the warehouse, the bale number, and yeah. that and because of that we can tell who the farmer is and what field it came from. These are the sacks of samples that'll go to the USDA classing office. And see each one of those samples that they pull, they put a, yeah. a yeah. piece of this like that in it with that same code. type questions. This okay. Illinois girl who didn't even know what a cotton field looked okay. like. Um, like what's that white stuff over there? Oh, duh, that's cotton. Um, so these plants, which uh -huh. are now absent of the fluffy white cotton, will they cultivate, break those up? They'll just shred the stalks. Shred the stalks. And, and then turn it. be ready to replant something there later. Okay, now will they use some of these seeds to plant the new cotton? Probably not. That in When I was a kid, that's what we did. We would save the seed uh -huh. the best, from the best field, but the the genetics are so advanced and controlled that oh, okay. everybody purchases seeds now. So does anybody yeah. then just grow, like in Illinois, some farmers just grow seed corn? Yes. Some, so, pe some people, not right around here, but some people do grow seed cotton. Okay. That is right. Okay. And so when do they, this is the beginning of November and I've seen ripe, ripe, whatever. What do you call it? Flowered? Cotton fields? What's the word? Um, they're ready to be harvested. Okay. Just like yeah. corn. Okay. So, but it turns white about when in the year? When does it flower? Uh, well, it, it makes, let's go back up to the all right, so here I okay. was asking her about how the cotton grows. And everything. Yeah, the cotton would be planted in May, maybe even late April. But okay. it'd be and uh, by a planter. Yeah, by a, a, a planter pulled by a tractor. Okay. And, and the uh, by the fourth of July, you would probably have blooms like this. Oh, I didn't realize there was a flower to it. Oh yeah, it's a really pretty flower Duh. it's white and then it turns red and oh. then it where that flower is that that will become this bowl okay. like this and then eventually the bowl cracks open and as it continues to mature it'll you know open up all the way and there's a whole field of cotton you know you look at it but it's not it's not like that over okay there. so this this is not for real what you're finding and decorating with those of you not lucky enough to live around cotton fields like I do now, this comes from overseas, and yes, it's cotton, but it's all been glued, fake, put in this. What do you call these parts? The leaf part? The bowl? The bowl. B-O-L-L. So, you're not getting the real thing. I'll bet you found that tour as interesting as we did. A couple of years ago, I put together a PDF class for delivery at a sewing conference and I called it Textiles for the Seamstress. For just $12.95, you'll learn all about textiles so that you can order them online with confidence. For example, you'll learn things like what's the difference between a satin and a sateen, a velvet and a velveteen, exactly what is tencel. Learn all about rayon and how to take care of it. What does ITY stand for anyway? Is it a jersey or an interlock? All about knits. What the heck is a matelassé? How are jacquards made? Exactly what's the difference between a brocade and a tapestry? You get the idea. With this PDF, you'll be able to print it out and go to the URL given to see the photos in color and hear me talk you through it all, just like a private class. Find the link to that class in the description below this video. 
To learn more about the creative sewing process I enjoy, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Follow me on all of social media, especially my sewing blog at blog.landasfiles.com. And for newsy emails and money-saving specials at my website, subscribe to my newsletter and I'll thank you with a private video about the very intriguing way I set in sleeves. Thanks for joining me.